<laughs> this is my purpose. That now it is recording. I'm gonna have to erase that. All right, all right, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's stop the TikToks. All right. Let's focus. Let's focus. All right, Guillen, ready? So this part right here, you guys already know. You guys are pretty good at this. Uh, I didn't see any issues with this. So we're taking derivative with respect to y. The bottom letter is, the, is what you're taking the derivative with, right? So we're taking the derivative with respect to y. So the derivative of 2y cubed with respect to y is just 6y. If you want to be specific, oh yeah, 6y squared. If you want to be specific, it's 6y squared dy dy. But do we, do we write that? No. no. But if you wanted to be specific, you could. Like dy dy is just a 1. And what's the derivative of 5 cosine y? Negative negative five 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 five. Yeah, and then that's it. That's it. There's an equal sign, and we got correct notation. Everything's correct. Cool or not cool? All right. And then letter B, and I don't think you guys have any issues with this. What's the derivative of 5u squared with respect to u? 10u. And the derivative of 3 cosine u? So. Yeah. It's minus a negative, so it's going to turn to a positive. Uh, and I think that's it. Good job. Good job. Yes. Well, no, we are. But notice I'm taking the derivative with respect to what letter? So I would have put du over du. Uh, but do I need du over du? du is the same thing as 1. So then that's what I had. 5, 10u, uh, 10u, du, du. It's a bit of a 1. You know what I mean? All right. So here we go. So you guys are seem to be having issues with product rule embedded within the uh, within the deal. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. Come on, Guillaume, focus, miss. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of 10? So I write secant squared and then leave the argument alone. X, Y, and I'm going to slow down. Am I done with the derivative of 10 here? No, chain rule comes in. And I have to take the derivative of the inside, but when I do the derivative of the inside, what rule am I going to use? Product first times derivative of the second. I know I know delta use y prime, use dy dx, guys. Plus second times derivative of the first. Are we cool with that? Okay. Equals. Now I just take the derivative of the right hand side. What's the derivative of x? One plus the derivative of y. Perfect. You are done with calculus. You're done. The calculus was the easy part. Everything else now just turns to algebra. algebra. Distribute the secant squared. There's more ways. You could divide if you wanted to and all that good stuff. But I think it's easier to distribute it. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write x secant squared xy. I don't put the dy dx in the, in the back here. Plus y secant squared xy equals 1 plus dy dx. I usually like to have my dy dx's in the back, but if you wanted to put it in the front, it's not a big deal. It's still being multiplied. I'm going to move the dy dx on the right-hand side to the left. So when I move it to the left, that's going to turn to a minus. And I'm going to move this product, the y secant squared, to the right. So I'm going to have this. x secant squared xy dy dx minus dy dx equals 1 minus y secant squared of xy. And I'll slow down. From there, I'm going to factor out what? dy dx. So I'm going to have dy dx. And I'm going to have x secant squared xy. If you can do it in one step, go for it. Not a big deal. Minus 1. Don't forget that minus 1. Equals 1 minus y secant squared xy. Are we still okay? Finally, we divide. Do I have any more white space? I have it over here. I'm going to put my arrow and write it right here. So finally, I divide. So here's what I have. dy dx equals, my numerator is 1 minus y secant squared of xy divided by x secant squared of xy minus 1. Nothing cancels. The most common mistake is you guys want to cancel something. Nothing cancels. I don't have a product. I have a minus something. So unless you can factor out of something, unless you can factor something out of the numerator, and that same factor you can factor out of the denominator, you can't cancel anything. Core and I cool. And there it is. That's it. You found your derivative. Well, I saw a mosquito. If you see me randomly clapping, I'm not clapping like there's a mosquito around here.
<laughs> I wish I had a button that would fire, like pyrotechnics. No, if I ever, if I ever have the privilege of being a multi-billionaire, I will put a whole bunch of pyrotechnics in my room, you know, or whatever I can, whatever I can put in, you know, if I can't, maybe like, yeah, 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 and then have, like, I just want to push a button, and boom, 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 boom. you know, it's going to be like a concert, you know, how do you not want to go to class when there's a, oh, there's a concert every day, okay, all right, here we go. <coughs> For the relation, square root of x plus y equals 3x, find the value of x, for which dy dx equals 17 and y equals 8. So really, this starts turning into like more algebra. This starts turning into like an algebra game. Uh, so first, let's go ahead and take a derivative. This is chain rule all over the place, 100%. So I'm going to rewrite it, guys. I haven't taken a derivative yet. x plus y to the 1 half equals 3x. So here we go. I'm taking a derivative now. I'm doing it implicitly. I move the half to the front, leave the inside alone, put what power? Am I done? No. Times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of x? One, One plus what's the derivative of y? Three. Close it, equals, what does that equal? Three. Three. Can we do that? Okay. If you wanted to, it would, it would take a lot. Of, well, I guess it's not that much, but uh, I think it's more headaches if you try to solve for x right now. I think the easiest thing to do, and this is just my opinion. Everyone has a different opinion. I think the easiest thing to do is to substitute what dy dx is and what y is and solve for x from that. Does that make sense to you guys? So here we go. I'm, I'm going to rewrite it first. I'm going to rewrite it pretty like this. Watch. I'm going to move this down. So I'm going to have 1 over 2 square root x plus y, and I guess this is a product, so I should have put the 1 plus, oh look, I already have the 1 there, 1 plus dy dx, and all that equals 3. I haven't done anything crazy. I haven't done anything crazy. I'm about to plug in 17 and 8. So here we go. 1 plus, what was dy dx? 17 over 2 square root, and I don't know what x is, that's what I'm trying to find, x plus, what was y? 8 equals 3. All right, I'm going to first start by multiplying the denominator. You're done. You're done with calculus. Everything is algebra. I'm going to start by multiplying by 2 square root of x plus 8 to cancel that out. So when I do that, here's what I have. I'm going to have 18. Does everyone know where that 18 came from? Yeah, 1 plus 17 equals, and I'm going to have 3 parentheses, I guess, well, I already, I already wrote this to 3, so too bad. 3 parentheses 2 square root of x plus 8. You don't have to go as slow as me. If you want to go fast, go for it. What's 3 times 2? So I'm going to write 18 equals 6 parentheses, or not parentheses, square root of x plus 8. Are we cool so far? Okay, now I'm going to get rid of that 6 in front of that square root. So I'm going to divide, divide by 6. What's 18 divided by 6? 3 equals square root x plus 8. Are we still cool? All right, now I'm going to get rid of the square root by doing what? Square. So square both sides. And now you have 9 equals x plus 8. Are we still okay, guys? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to subtract the 8. So what do I get? There you go. I like to verify just in case. So I, I, where do I like to verify? From the original one right here. I like to plug in that one right there and see if it really does equal 3. 1 plus 8 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. It works. <laughs> applause, applause, applause. La, 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 la. Okay. That's a song by, uh, yeah. Oh my God. That's also a song by Usher and... I believe it has special guest Will I Am. Okay. I think. All right, here we go. Let's go to the next one. Find dy dx in terms of x and y. We're just doing chain rule, nothing crazy. So I'm going to bring the 6 to the front, leave the x plus y alone. What power? And am I, am I done? No. Times what's the root of the inside? Perfect. All that equals 
two. Relax, relax. This is a product, and I could if I wanted to expand the x plus y, but I'm not because it's to the power of five. So since this is a product, I'm trying to solve for dy dx. I'm just going to divide by six x plus y to the fifth power. Do you guys see that? So when I do that, here's what I'm going to have. I'm going to have one plus dy dx equals two over six parentheses x plus y to the fifth power. And yeah, you can reduce that two and that six, which I guess we'll do it right now. That's a one now, and that's a three. All I got to do now is just move the one. one. Dy dx equals one over three parentheses x plus y to the fifth power minus one. If you wanted to, well, I'll stop. So I'm gonna talk about. What if this were a multiple choice and you didn't see this exact answer? It could have. It, I don't. I'm pretty sure if it were free response, they would just take this. Uh, you could always turn that one into whatever that denominator is. So don't write this down. Just listen. One over three x plus y to the fifth power minus three x plus y to the fifth power over three x plus y to the fifth power, and then you just get something that looks like this: one minus three x plus y to the fifth power over 3 x plus y to the fifth power. I think that would be pretty mean of them to do if they were to try to do that. But just keep in mind, re relax, we didn't do any calculus, it's just more algebra. We did a common denominator. Yeah or nay? <coughs> okay, oh my god. Okay. All right, here we go. Next one, guys. Don't worry about writing that down. Uh, yeah, let's take a derivative. They want the dy dx at the point 2, 1. So here we go. What's the derivative of y? dy dx minus the derivative of 4y cubed. Yeah, you're already a pro. Plus the derivative of x squared, guys. 2x equals the derivative of negative y squared. Excellent, guys. Plus the derivative of x. Yeah, you guys, you guys are doing awesome, guys. I'm happy. I'm happy. I have purpose. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to erase that because someone could easily be like, oh, this guy's very dark. Like, no, 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 I promise. I just, I, yeah, okay, I'll stop. Here we go. I'm going to plug in the point two one. Uh, I think that's easier. That's just me. You could always solve for dy dx, isolate. Maybe in physics they do like isolate the variable and then plug in. But I just think, I always thought, it, I've always thought all my life since I was a little kid, I've always thought plugging in your point right here. And then solving for dy dx, I've always thought that was easier. That's just me. So here we go. dy dx minus 12 parentheses 1 squared dy dx plus 2 times 2 equals negative 2 times 1 uh, dy dx plus 1. Okay, now it just turns to a game of algebra, solve for x, solve for dy dx, all that good stuff. So let's see. dy dx minus 12 dy dx plus 4 equals negative 2 dy dx plus 1. All the dy dx's move them to the left, everything else to the right. This is a 1, combine like terms. That's a 1 right there. Yes? Did I mess up? Well, I squared it. So 1 squared was 1, and then 1 times 12 is 12. So that's why I just wrote... No, no, you can ask me. It's all good. Yeah, I just squared it. 1 squared is 1, and then 1 times 12 is 12. Okay. Cool, cool. So let's see. 1 minus 12, that's negative 11. Negative 11, dy, dx. And yeah, I know. I could have just done them all in one shot, but I, I didn't. I'm moving, I'm moving that too, so I'm going to write plus 2 dy, dx equals negative 4 plus 1. I, yes, I could have done it in one shot, guys, but I want to show you where everything's coming from. Negative 11 plus 2, what's that? Negative 9 dy dx equals negative 3. And now to get dy dx by itself, all you got to do is divide. So negative 3 divided by negative 9 is simply 1 third. Sometimes you won't get the opportunity to do all the algebra because they will ask you in letters like ABC. And letter A might just say solve for dy dx, like just the expression. And then letter B will say, what's dy dx when x is 2 and y is 1? So 
So yeah, so just be aware. All right, uh, last question. This is a legit AP question from 2008. It is question 16. So here is the difference between fives and fours. Look at the percentage of fives getting it correct. What's the percentage? Look at the big drop between fives and fours. What's the percentage of fours getting it correct? And then threes are just barely staying alive at 30%. So if you want to know the difference between a four and a five, the fives are getting this question correct and the fours are not. Do you want to take two minutes to see if you guys can figure it out? All right, give it a shot. You guys are still working, keep going at it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started though. So I would start off by saying, how many of you got an answer by the way? What'd you get? A squared got D. Who else? Who got D? And F got D. Wilson. No, don't worry, the MS doesn't stand for, stands for, stands for your name. H W oh not Hannah. It's, I didn't confuse you for your older sister. L W. Right. Yeah, no, we're about to find out. Let's find out. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine x y. Am I done? Time derivative of the inside. What's what's the derivative of the inside? Equals what's the derivative of x? One. You could, if you wanted to, divide by cosine x y, but I think it's easier. Well, I don't know. Did you do it by dividing or did you distribute? Yeah, that's what I would have done too. X cosine x y, and I like to have the dy dx in the back here, plus y cosine x y equals one. Move this to the right because you're trying to solve for dy dx. So x cosine x y dy dx equals. 1 minus y cosine xy, and then divide by x cosine xy. So dy dx equals 1 minus y cosine xy divided by x cosine xy. And yeah, good job, guys. Good job. You got it. If you would have distributed, if you would have divided, you would have gotten the same answer. We just probably would have had to do more, a little bit more algebra. Um, no, because it's in PDF and it just it was highlighted on the Word document, but it wasn't. Uh, so yeah, you know what? I was going to show you this problem, but this problem, well, you know what? We'll still show you. Let's show you. Ocean Service. Uh, well, I got the word. I got the initial Word document here because I typed this out earlier. Math Life, Calculus, 23, 24 Notes, and it's right. I'm pretty organized digitally. I'm not organized in. 
but the digital my digital life is kind of organized. Come on, buddy. Enable content. Oh, I like dark mode because I just think dark mode looks cooler. Oh, I gotta push the control button. Well, I can just highlight. Oh yeah, but I can't push control. Like. You know what I mean? I don't have a keyboard here. If I had a TI laptop studio, I could have. That's why my that's my next laptop. Mm -hmm. Space. How do I push enter? Enter. Check it out, guys. Calculus. But it's not. I guess I should have, probably should have put this article when we start doing concavity, concave up, concave up, increasing at an increasing level. You see level rising? Yes, it is. But here's the alarming part. It's rising at an increasing rate. Oh, okay. You guys aren't, you don't like this? This is calculus. Well, yeah. But, well, when you see levels were rising, but it's more concerning that it's rising at an increasing rate. If, if it was rising at a decreasing rate, we'd be like, well, you know, sea levels are rising, but they're not going super fast. But now they are increasing at an increasing rate. And there's a whole bunch of study here to back that up. And, you know, it's calculus, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, math is everywhere. Everything's everywhere. All subjects are interconnected. All right, last thing. Yeah, last thing, and then we're done. And then you uh, will tackle their deltas. Uh, if you're having issues with deltas, guys, ask me. I think there is issues with, like, the last stuff. So maybe we'll do that right now. Uh, a 13 foot ladder leaning against a house. When its base starts to slide away, by the time the base is 12 feet from the house, the base is moving at a rate of five feet per second. So what is that, the base? So this is what we're getting to, guys. Dx dt is five. Five what? Feet per second. And so this whole motion of dx dt, like, remember guys, it is a slope. The dx is like this notation. Dx just really means a change in x. And dt just means a change in time. I don't know why that took me so long to answer. So, yeah, so I, I don't want you to just. Yes, no, yeah, you were going to say, look, guys. Yes, yes. Oh, actually, slope is the other way, right? Okay. When do we use what? And I really shouldn't be putting an equal sign. If, I, if Dr. George were here, Dr. Becky George, she'd probably get really rowdy with me. Uh, so let me take away the equal sign. It's a, one of my, she's a really cool professor who I owe a lot of thanks to because we've had so many discussions about math life and everything. All right. This is used in algebra. Anytime we're just talking about the change in y or the change in x and you have some quantifiable numbers, right? This is used when we're talking about really, 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 really small changes in y and changes in x. Infinitesimal, practically zero. Sometimes they converge, sometimes they don't, or, you know, what, what not. We're, we're kind of getting already into that PC stuff. So, but they really mean the same thing. This is like an average rate of change. This is an instantaneous rate of change at a moment, while this is like with an, like, okay, I'm, I'm going too far into it. But do you not know what I'm trying to say? So anytime you see these units, the XDT, like, man, I don't, I don't know. I just know it means derivative. Guys, remember, this means like the change in x over the change in time. So notice, I have it in feet per second. So feet per second. Cool or not cool? So, and then eventually we're going to start talking about related rates, of the relationship between x, y, and z, uh, and all that good stuff. But uh, if you're really good at implicit, you'll be fine with the related rates. If you have a hard time with implicit, we're going to have a hard time with related rates. How do we feel? Nothing crazy, right? All right, so today all we got to do, guys, is just finish up your deltas. Uh, so let's go ahead and take care of that, and uh, tomorrow we'll have a circuit.